It all started when crafty Brits disguised the production of military vehicles as the production of water tanks. For greater secrecy, the product was given an impersonal name, Mark I. At the same time, the modification with a machine gun became a symbolic girl, and the one with a cannon, accordingly, a boy. Cute, isn't it? This monstrous machine on large tracks could overcome ditches, roadblocks, and approach enemy positions unharmed. The 12mm armor protected the crew from bullets and fragments. 57mm cannons and machine guns cleared the way for the attackers. As a result, British infantry losses during the attacks decreased by 20 times. From then on, the tank's further career developed on an upward trend, but Russia's invasion of Ukraine almost put an end to this story. Now, the tank is like an extra piece on the chessboard. What about the billions of dollars that have been spent on the development and production of tanks? After all, what will happen to fans of tank shooters now? If you are also a tank fan, give a thumbs up and make yourself comfortable, because we're going to dive into the world of tanks. Pun intended. In fact, tanks have always been changing. For example, Mark I did not have a turret, but a year later, a tank with a turret that could be deployed appeared. You must admit that it's much more effective. The armor of the first tanks couldn't withstand a direct hit from a gun, so later it became thicker, and even more thicker. Then it was placed at a special angle to increase the thickness. But it's impossible to increase the thickness of the armor indefinitely, simply because the tank won't move. So the tanks changed again, and the development of tactics for their use went in a different direction. The main advantages of the next generation of tanks were speed and ambush. During World War II, German generals perfected this tactic. Tank columns either broke through the defense at its weakest point or bypassed it when they encountered prepared defenses. The tanks could run 300 miles into the enemy's defense in both cases. The goal was to capture logistics hubs, settlements, and bridges. The American M4 Sherman, the Soviet T-34, the German Panzer V. The effectiveness of tanks in World War II can hardly be overestimated. Therefore, after the war, more effective anti-tank weapons began to appear. For example, the American BGM-71 tow dates back to the 1960s and 70s. However, it is still in service alongside the modern Javelin, Spike, or Stugna. In response, tanks received enhanced bottom protection, modern armor, and various features such as dynamic protection and active defense systems, which include optoelectronic suppression systems and systems with fired protective charges. Thus, after World War II, a generation of tanks changed, and their credibility was preserved. Battles did not confirm their authority. On different sides of the Berlin Wall, the party spent many years just flexing their muscles. Finally, a new tank battle took place, but not in Europe, but the Middle East. What did it show? Operation Desert Sabre, which took place as part of military operation Desert Storm, is rightly called the last great tank battle of the 20th century. Along the border with Saudi Arabia, coalition troops encountered large minefields. Behind them were more than 500,000 Iraqi soldiers trapped in a long line of trenches. Elite Iraqi tank divisions were in the rear, 100 kilometers away, anticipating a breakthrough. The tank fist of 1,400 Abrams and Challenger 1s, supported by thousands of armored personnel carriers, was to march north and then turn sharply east toward occupied Kuwait. General Schwarzkopf called this maneuver a left hook. The quintessence of the operation was the epic Battle of 73 Easting in the Battle of Medina Ridge, but the real massacre happened in the Battle of Fright Night, officially known as the Battle of Norfolk. It began at night. It was raining, and the air was shrouded in the smoke of burning oil wells. Tanks were rushing toward the main supply hub of the Iraqi army, like a herd of buffaloes to a watering hole. As the tanks passed low hills or depressions, Iraqi fighters jumped from hiding, aiming rocket-powered grenade launchers at the tanks, trying to take them out from behind. Only quick action from the tank's machine gunners prevented disaster. It was a 360-degree battle. An estimated 850 to 1,100 Iraqi tanks were destroyed, as well as hundreds of armored personnel carriers and artillery. Coalition losses amounted to a few tanks. The Desert Sabre can be called a battle of tank generations. The state-of-the-art Abrams relied on Chobam's superior multi-layered composite armor. Its thermal imager could see through the sandstorm. Its gun fired depleted uranium shells, leaving no chance for the armor of T-72. 
and the less advanced T-55 and T-62 that Iraq had in service. And the Abrams had a target range that was two times longer. Analysts have concluded that the coalition's success was determined by more modern equipment. Therefore, the further development of tanks was also determined. For example, General Dynamics land systems sees the next generation main battle tank as such. The tank has a hybrid diesel-electric engine, which means lower fuel consumption, longer range, and quieter running. Desert Storm showed that the engines of modern Abrams are too voracious. Abrams X is to receive improved armor and a powerful cannon. However, the search, capture, and tracking of targets will be handled by AI. It will also determine the level of danger from each detected threat, regardless of the weather and time of day overboard. In turn, the German Rheinmetall, also one of the leaders, KF-51, focuses on strengthening protection. They propose moving away from traditional armor to the Rheinmetall Strike Shield Active Defense System. This solution should increase the vehicle's protection without adding additional weight. The KF-51 specialty is the integration of a massive launcher for four Hero 120 barrage munitions into the turret, which should hit targets at a distance of up to 25 miles. In addition, these drones will also be able to conduct reconnaissance. Sounds pretty cool, doesn't it? Now, let's imagine these tanks of the future somewhere in Donbas. The Russian army's disaster made some analysts talk about the end of the tank era. In the first hours of the invasion, Russian tank columns moved as if they were led by American General Norman Schwarzkopf. But then, the unexpected happened. Far from their bases, Russian tankers faced, in some cases, fuel and ammunition supply interruptions, and in others, a lack of awareness of the tactical situation. The accumulation of tanks and other vehicles on the roads made them a convenient target for Ukrainian artillery and aviation. Mobile groups of Ukrainian troops armed with man-portable ATGMs, such as Enlaw and Javelin, and even ancient Carl Gustav grenade launchers also suffered significant losses. The Russian army was forced to retreat, abandoning immobilized equipment. However, management failures, planning failures, and human error cannot be attributed to the tank's uselessness. Ben Hodges expressed the same opinion after the Russian failure near Kiev. It is important not to draw the wrong lesson from what we saw. Simultaneously with the Kyiv and Kharkiv directions, Russian troops attacked southern Ukraine, and in this direction, this tactic worked. The Russians advanced far enough to cross the Dnipro River with minimal losses. They captured Berdyansk, Melitopol, and Kherson. This can be recognized as a significant military success. In September 2022, the Ukrainian armed forces implemented the Slobozanska operation. A lightning-fast counteroffensive liberated the Kharkiv region. The Ukrainians used the same method. Strike groups led by tanks found a weakness in the Russian defense and made a breakthrough tens of miles in depth. As a result, thousands of square miles of territory were liberated, and hundreds of pieces of trophy equipment were captured. It should be noted that at that time, Ukraine did not yet have Western tanks in service, German Leopard, American Abrams, and British Challengers. Now Ukrainians have these tanks but we don't hear much about the success of the 2022 model. Why? The fact is that after active fighting in 2022, the front line has stabilized. Thanks to mobilization, the Russians managed to saturate the defense with infantry and build an echelon defense during the winter of 2023. The Ukrainians did the same. Neither side can now create the conditions for full-fledged tank attacks. Reconnaissance UAVs are constantly circling the battlefield. Any attempt by either side to assemble at least a few vehicles for an attack is stopped by kamikaze drones, artillery, or MLRS attacks. Tanks are often used to fire high explosive shells from conventionally closed positions at a distance of up to six miles, erasing the line between tanks and artillery. But even with this tactic, tankers are at risk, as the bombardment munitions can reach a depth of 18 miles. Suppose tanks do find themselves on the battlefield in their usual role. In that case, they immediately run into minefields the size of a small European country or fall victim to artillery and kamikaze drones. The drone operators are so skilled that they are able to hit with suspended munitions even through an open hatch. Various superstructures that are supposed to protect against drones and drops are effective for a short time, if at all. A stalemate has developed.
The first to respond was the Franco-German conglomerate Kins. Their new generation tank, the European main battle tank ADT-140, can replace the Leclerc and Leopard 2. This is a traditional tank, as the vehicle is equipped with a fierce 140mm Ascalon gun. Its main feature should be an easy change of caliber in the field, from 140mm to 120mm. Most importantly, the EMBT turret is equipped with a multi-purpose sensor system that includes six anti-drone radars, four laser and missile warning systems, an acoustic detector for detecting enemy shots, and a 360-degree local situation warning system. This tank can detect and shoot down air targets at a range of 2.5 miles with its 30mm cannon, which is part of the ARCS-30 combat module. This module also includes 12.7 and 7.62mm machine guns. With this equipment, the tank will be able to defend itself and possibly return to its main functions, assaults and rapid attacks as part of an armored fist. Thus, at one time, the Mark I was a solution to the crisis of traditional offensive tactics. Later, tank breakthroughs became a solution to echelon defense. Now, tanks will be armed against drones. That is, the tank is not dead. It just hid for a while. But will the old tactics of using tanks remain relevant? Maybe tanks are turning into the primary means of defense rather than offense right in front of our eyes. Share your thoughts in the comments.